Fakala fula hi atu, hane e de wala tala te tupu niko mo mai gila tamai afi afi a hatu notu nei. Niwe was on blue alert on Tuesday afternoon due to tropical depression 14F. Parliament has passed the departure tax amendment to a regulation that will see an increase to the departure tax. The Broadcasting Corporation of Niue has received a directive from government to remove and switch off Kanyu internet operations on BCN's towers. Search and rescue training for personnel on island to build capacity for better coordination of rescue efforts at sea. Niue was placed on blue alert on Tuesday afternoon due to Tropical Depression 14F that brought gale force winds, very rough seas and squally thunderstorms. People were advised to prepare for bad weather and to have emergency supplies on hand in case the situation worsened. But the Tropical Depression passed by, leaving minimal damage. New Met Service and Broadcasting Corporation staff worked throughout the night to provide updates and track its movement. By Wednesday morning, the weather had started to clear up and the Disaster Council officials made an assessment of damage sustained. For some locals, fallen trees meant traffic needed to be redirected, while outside services worked to clear roads of fallen branches or debris, but the island came out relatively unscathed. The blue alert was cancelled yesterday morning following a new Disaster Council meeting, and this and the new Meteorological Service will continue to monitor any other depressions in the region, while the community at large have been reminded that the island is still on, in cyclone season and should have emergency supplies and stocks on standby as part of disaster preparedness. Parliament has passed an amendment to the departure tax regulations that will see an increase in departure tax that has already been approved by Cabinet. The new Legislative Assembly met for their very first meeting yesterday that had a slightly disjointed start and a bit of confusion. The meeting started with the tabling of documents, bills and regulations. Honourable Breton Sipuli put forward the Departure Tax Amendment Bill for its first reading with a brief explanation before opening for discussion. One of the main amendments would for the departure tax to be collected by the airline in New Zealand on behalf of government and that would be incorporated into airline tickets. A few members shared their views about the merits and concerns they have regarding the amendments pres presented. There were questions about why the information in the introduction of the bill was vague and did not provide enough information to support the merits of the bill. But there was an agreement that building this into airline ticket costs would make it easier, but the main question was regarding the amount of money from $34 to $80 as being somewhat steep, especially if government plan to apply it across the board with no exemptions. The bill passed the first reading with nine votes for and six votes against. There was more in-depth discussions through the second reading of the regulations amendments, and despite some hesitation, the majority of the assembly voted and carried the motion forward there are still areas that would need Cabinet to reconsider and Minister Sibeli said they will still need to table the regulations for the Assembly's approval before they can implement these taxes. An exact date is uncertain at this time. The Broadcasting Corporation of Niue has received a government directive and notice to remove and switch off car new equipment from the corporation's towers. A new government directive for the removal of car new equipment from the BCN towers could mean that three quarters of customers will be affected. This is an ongoing battle over the provision of internet services that started last year when the internet provider started charging users for its service. It was assumed that during negotiations from April up until June, the matter had been resolved. Kanyu is operated by internet provider Rocket Systems that is owned by Imani Lui, who has been interviewed by Radio New Zealand, stating that three quarters of their customers will be affected. There has been support for the ISP with people responding via social media, but these are matters that need to be resolved by government and this local business. The ongoing row over differences of opinions and interpretations of some of the regulations has seen this dragged out. The matter is still being discussed by 
Telecom Nui Limited and government officials with details that are confidential and they are unable to make any comment at this time. If operations are switched off, then a majority of Kainu users will have no internet access and may need to find an alternative, and that would be to use Telecom Nui services. A three-day training workshop was held at the Nui Golf and Sports Club this week to build the capacity of local search and rescue personnel. The training facilitated by a team from New Zealand Rescue Coordination Centre emphasised the importance of coordination in all rescue operations. Chief of Police Tony Edwards says this training is pivotal to safety and ensuring that the department has the expertise and resources to coordinate rescue operations at sea working in partnership with other agencies. The main purpose for this training is uh, basically to teach our, our team, uh, the emergency management team, about um, positioning, plotting, um, you know, the whereabouts, um, but it's mainly to coordinate. Um, how do we coordinate ourselves uh, between uh, an incident um, and uh, from us here on land? So it's all about working together and uh, making sure that all the agencies that we've brought together uh, that will be able to understand uh, the responsibilities and, uh, and how we can coordinate things better. My vision is um, that emergency management is quite important um, and it's always based on uh, uh, police to, 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 uh, to attend um, any incidents of emergency management or responding. Uh, so my vision is, is that I think it's better that we have a, 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 a working uh, interoperability uh, approach where all agencies involved or can become involved um, to deal with any response. So we have uh, a, a, a good number of agencies involved um, and those who are relevant to uh, any uh, incident or circumstances, uh, we can call on them to come and assist us um, in any uh, call-outs. There were participants from Newe Police, the Transport Department, Crash Fire Rescue Division, fisheries and also other key personnel who assist with search and rescue. Training looked at both land and sea rescue but there was more of a focus on sea rescue that poses some additional challenges. In order for rescue teams to respond to searches out at sea, they would need a vessel. We've used uh, Tafimwana as, as our search uh, vessel. Um, and, you know, I mean, we haven't had major incidents where, uh, you know, we've always used it, but um, Tafimwana is our vessel, and we could also say that Tafimwana is, is our lifeline as well because it does um, offloading of cargo and, uh, you know, and if we were to, if something was to happen to our Tafimwana in any circumstances, uh, that's the only vessel we've got. So uh, we've just got to be mindful of how we use a vessel, um, and we just got to sort of pick and choose whether, uh, you know, I mean, if it's life and death, then it leaves us with no choice to get Duff and Miner out. Um, but we, we've also put a proposal in um, for Niue um, as border agencies for a multi-agency uh, search and rescue vessel. And it'll be uh, used in different types of incidents. So you've got um, customs, fisheries, uh, police. Um, so all those uh, agencies who do this kind of work, whether it's um, monitoring fish, uh, uh, fishing vessels, uh, whether it's search and rescue out on the, on the, on the, on the sea, um, whether it's clearing yachts um, as they come in, that's the purpose of this uh, multi-agency vessel that uh, we're looking at. So we've pretty much um, 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 got everything in place at the moment um, and we're hoping that uh, we'll, we'll be able to see this vessel um, in the next coming months. The capacity building training concluded on Wednesday afternoon with participants coming away learning a bit more about the importance of understanding information provided, how to respond accordingly, how to better coordinate emergency responses, whether on land or out at sea. That concludes tonight's news bulletin. We do hope that you have an enjoyable weekend ahead and join us again for our next news bulletin on Tuesday afternoon.